What's going on guys? Rybombi Teacher in the house and I'm here with the GPL Week 9 Power Rankings. For those of you, of course, who may be wondering why I'm doing this again, uh, shoutouts to Transol, he actually noticed there was a mistake on the slides in the dock, um, so I fixed it. So I'm redoing it, I deleted the old video, this is gonna be the rehash. Uh, I do apologise for that, of course, in advance, but yeah. We're gonna pretty much forget that the last video happened, and we're gonna do it again. So, as always, uh, with these power ranking videos, the metrics are based mostly off your win-loss record with differential as a tiebreaker. Gonna be adding a bit of my opinion in as well going forward. There is one person I do want to address an issue with specifically in this video, uh, so, and I know he watches, so you will get it. Obviously, I normally do this with Denistrio, but Denistrio and I couldn't find the time to record together because we were both busy at different times. So yeah, just me this week, so hopefully the video is not going to be an hour long like last one. I know someone memed on me for that, but yeah, it's funny. But either way, coming in at number 16 is going to be Krimpix. Unfortunately, a sad familiar face to see here at the moment. Uh, now a victim of the transfer effect, getting absolutely smashed by an incredibly powerful team. I uh, did have a good bit of a positive hope. He did actually kill one Pokemon, um, which is better than um, other games he's had where he's just lost 6-0. Pretty hard situation, but... Uh, at least he's still playing. He's still playing his matches, which I respect. So, thanks for that, Grimpix, of course. I do hope to see you next season with a draft that's a little bit more to your style. I don't think your draft is working for you at all. So, yeah. Either way, it, it happens, but yeah. Alright. Coming in at number 15. Rather disappointed with Yuri for this week. Not gonna lie to him. Uh, got absolutely demolished by Pelly this week. Uh, straight up 6 0 loss. Pretty much to two Pokemon mainly. Swords Dance Glyscore and then Azumarill. Uh, he lets Swords Dance Glyscore set right up, which is never something you should be doing. Uh, he also left his Skarmory in that was taunted, uh, had no attacking moves, which seemed a little bit inexplicable to me. If it's taunted, you might as well just switch it out, save the health bar, uh, instead of just letting it struggle to death. Some really strange misplays, honestly, this this time round from Yurufa, especially as he played pretty well this first match. Uh, hopefully we get back to seeing the Yurufa from the first game, and this was probably just a momentary blip. But, yeah. Either way, uh, good luck for week 10, of course, Yurufa. Alright. Coming in at 14, getting his first win since joining us as Akami. Had a bit of a struggle in his first couple of games, but there's no shame in that, and he had a really hard schedule. This time he had to play Exo, and, he, uh, and even though Exo's team was a little bit scuffed because Showdown's been bugging recently. Uh, yeah, gotta beat what's in front of you, and Akami did just that, and did it very well. Really good use of resources, uh, very smartly played, uh, definitely a decent 4 out win of course. I believe you play Shadow AX next, which is going to be a very tough match, but uh, I look forward to seeing how that one goes, because uh, I've, I've been impressed by your play since you joined the league so far. Right, coming in at number 13, also picking up his first win is my good friend Nitro. Uh, Definitely happy to see this because this was kind of a tough match for him playing against Dizzy. Dizzy is inconsistent, we know this, he's been inconsistent all season. But uh, Nitro made much better use of his team this week. His last team he didn't play particularly well. This time he actually played it really nicely. The Blacephalon play uh, prediction on the Grand switch in was a very good showing of what Nitro is capable of doing. Uh, definitely a smart way, took away uh, Dizzy's offensive pressure. And there was just no way back for Dizzy in this situation. Very nice win for Nitro. He's currently 50% win rate since he joined the league. Not bad. Not a bad start. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the last three matches go for you. Uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, they are difficult matches, but who knows? Uh, upsets are very much on the cards this week, it seems. So yeah, good luck, Nitro. Right, coming in at number 12, it seems to be going on a landslide to destruction here is Sylvie. Um, four bad losses in a row. This one was his best one. Uh, he only lost 3-0 this week uh, compared to the 5-0 and 2-6-0s he's had before. Uh, it did take out a couple of months pretty well, but like a few people this season, uh, they've let entry hazards stack up and had no way to remove them. Um, so he had a combination of rocks, spikes and sticky webs on his field. Uh, that he never got rid of and that's a huge problem because that just wears down your entire team and at that point uh, Zerkatry just comes in and cleans up so it's an unfortunate situation for Sylvie had he not swapped out Jolteon for Linoon I felt like he would have had a better matchup but even even with the Jolteon I wouldn't have been too convinced that he would have won the game uh, regardless because DJ is a very strong player and he's been playing very well all season 
So, coming in at number 11 is Denistrio. Uh, very much a fun match this week with Shadow where they swap teams. Uh, really, really fun to watch. Uh, great match. If you haven't watched it, I really strongly suggest you do. Uh, probably one of the best examples of a match that was just a straight up brawl. Uh, I was really worried for Denistrio in the turn 1 play because uh, letting Mega Venusaur take a Zen Headbutt for basically free, having cursed turn 1, was a pretty big mechanical misplay, something that Denistrio has sometimes struggled with all season, gets predictions wrong. Uh, but the Carmine Slowbro definitely put in a lot of work, wore down that Metagross, uh, particularly after the Scold Burn. Really nice bulky set, uh, definitely paid off a lot. Uh, that I really loved the Don Fan though. The Don Fan was the uh, highlight for me, that Weakness Policy Rock Polish set. It's really fun, uh, it's a good set. Uh, I have seen it before, but not very often, so it's nice to see it back. Uh, definitely put in a huge amount of work. And then of course the Alolan Ninetales 1v1ing a Tapu Fini uh, for the win. Pretty nice play. Uh, definitely could have lost that game though had Shadow been a little bit more aggressive with his Finny. Uh, he clicked Carmine twice instead of Moonblast. Uh, I don't actually know if Shadow had Moonblast. I, didn't, I can't remember off the top of my head now. But yeah, I wouldn't have been too surprised. But yeah, either way, narrow 1-0 win. It's a win nonetheless. Um, wins are what Denistrio needs right now if he wants to fight for playoffs. So uh, hopefully... He can start racking up some wins, but yeah. Coming in at number 10, not really much to say this week, honestly. Uh, Goshi dodged his match against me, so he was given a 3-0 loss. Kind of disappointed, honestly. I beat him 4-0 last time, so I could have had more differential out of him. But yeah, I'm disappointed. Uh, don't dodge your games, ever. It's There's no excuse, honestly. I mean, I get it that tactically for him, it's actually probably a better decision to take the 3-0. Because uh, had he lost by a worse differential, he'd be behind Denistrio at this point. So uh, it's a tough situation for him. Obviously, he's fighting for playoffs. But if he's just going to keep dodging games, he's going to be out of playoffs anyway. Because the people below him are going to win games. So, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, I'm disappointed. Hopefully, Agoshi actually bothers to play this week. Uh, I do expect him to play. Because he, he is, if he actually tryhards, he's one of the stronger battlers in this division. But he's not showing it all season so far. And I'm kind of not happy about it, personally. Coming in at number 9 is our resident Mr. Inconsistent, Dizzy. Uh, definitely struggled a little bit this week. Uh, <clears throat> Tapu Bulu was a pretty good help and a hindrance. Uh, did take out Venusaur relatively well. Uh, but uh, constantly getting uh, or giving Nitro HP on some of his bulkier Pokemon just made it really hard for himself to actually break down Nitro's team. Uh, obviously, the Greninja switch in was incredibly unfortunate. There was no real way he was ever going to predict a hidden power grass there. Um, but nonetheless, it happened. So, uh, it's an unfortunate situation, but that's Pokemon for you. You know, it happens. Um, but hopefully, Dizzy comes back with a win next season. Um, or next week, rather, not next season. Uh, hopefully, we can get back to seeing the Dizzy that's got the four wins, not the five losses. Uh, but yeah, good luck, Dizzy, of course. <laughs> Coming in at number 8 is the man on a charge right now is Solo. Um, <coughs> following up upsetting Shadow with following up upsetting Crasher this week. Really good. Two upsets in a row has to be said. In some respects I don't even think it's an upset anymore. I think Solo has definitely shown that his aggressive playstyle can be really hard to deal with. Uh, he can definitely be hard to live up against. Um, but yeah, I was concerned. I thought Crasher had a lot of bulk on his team that was really hard to break down. But the combination of that Porygon Z and the Mold Breaker Haxorus, uh, last time we saw Scarf, this time we saw Dragon Dance. It did get burned, but it didn't matter because even burn at plus two attack, it still just rips through teams. It's incredibly strong. Uh, really, really strong play from Solo. Really good aggression that Crasher just had no answer for. So, yeah, ultimately, very solid win for Solo. Definitely worth it. Coming in at number seven, I'm really happy to see this from Poli. Very big 6-0 win, much needed 6-0 win to fix that rather scuffed differential that he had. Uh, it's still a little on the scuffed side though, but he's very much in the playoff spots right now. 5-4 uh, record is very impressive. Uh, I've been very much looking forward to it. That glide score was very clever, uh, very good set. Uh, really clever move to bring Taunt for Skarmory in case of the passivity that Skarmory can sometimes run. But yeah, very big win, very convincing win with three matches left to play. Uh, we definitely need to see a couple more wins to guarantee his playoff spot, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing them now. 
coming in at number six. Uh, he squandered a chance to go above Shadow this week, Exo. Uh, Exo did play very well, uh, but with a scuffed team, it's really difficult to win against someone that's actually got their proper team. Uh, he did have a decent enough time. Uh, it is an unfortunate loss for him, but there's no real harm done. He's still in that fourth spot for playoffs, so he still will be playing the wildcard match. Uh, but if Shadow continues his losing streak, he will overtake, so it can happen. Uh, stranger things have happened at this point in the season. We are at the business end right now. But Exo is a very good mechanical player. He's very steady. He takes a lot of time, but he counts very methodically, uh, and he is a super tough player to play against. He does have to play me in Week 12, which is going to be a tough match, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right. Coming in at number 5 is the aforementioned Shadow, losing two games in a row, but this one was a narrow 1-0 loss, uh, obviously losing the show match, which was great fun to watch. Uh, he did play very well for the most part, just a couple of little misplays really cost him at the end. Um, but yeah, definitely bringing that Scarf Silvali, which we've been seeing a lot of, we meme Denistrio for running normal Silvali all the time, but in this case it was necessary to fun uh, thunder wave that Z9 Hiligo, uh, so Z safeguard didn't really matter, but yeah. Really cool effort, uh, really smart use of a very hard team. He did swap himself into the worst matchup and only lost 1-0, which does prove how strong Shadow is. Uh, but at this point in the season, you kind of want to be winning games, not losing, because uh, he is losing his grip on the top two. So, yeah, very tough position, but Shadow should still make playoffs, honestly. He should still win at least two of his last three games, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Coming in, number four is going to be Crasher, who finally lost his win streak. He had six in a row, and then he lost again. Uh, pretty unfortunate, but at the end of the day, like he played relatively passive and got punished. Um, Solo does do very well against pounded, um, passive players. Uh, this was not Crasher's finest hour. He did have a decent early game, though. Uh, he just couldn't carry on. Uh, Solo found a way back into the game, and he just never looked back. But, yeah, nonetheless, still very much in the playoff spot. He's very much number two in the Sword Division, and I think it's pretty hard to catch him because Pelly, while he's a win behind, there's a uh, 19 differential between them, so Pelly's not going to overtake Crasher anytime soon. Um, there's pr pretty much nobody at will, so he's pretty much at least locked the number two spot. It's just whether in the last three weeks he can chase down DJ. It's going to be the final decision, really. Coming in number three is going to be me. Uh, pretty disappointed, honestly, that I'm here based on a forfeit win. I would much rather have played the match, but... Nonetheless, still a decent position for me. Uh, very much comfortably number two in the Shield division, which is quite an achievement given how stacked the division's been. I'm very happy with how this season's gone for me so far. Um, there is still a chance I can hunt down Transal, but it's incredibly difficult at this point. So, yeah, we'll have to see. I do play Transal this week. Um, we, if you haven't watched my pick and video, I strongly suggest you do. But if you didn't see it... Um, Transal and I banned a Pokemon from each other's team that we weren't allowed to use this week for our match. Uh, he banned my Infernape, which I'm really annoyed at him about. I was hoping he was going to ban like Cresselia or Hydreigon. But he banned my Infernape, which I understand why, because it rips through his Kieran especially. So yeah, it's going to be a fun match. We were actually due to be playing today, but unfortunately I got called in to do a double shift at work and I couldn't wake up in time. Uh, thankfully, Denistrio has given us an extension. We'll probably end up playing it tomorrow instead. So I do apologize for it being late, guys, but hopefully we can sort that all out <coughs> excuse me uh but yeah uh, i'm definitely looking forward to that coming in at number two is going to be dj pretty much a standard solid win for dj pretty decent uh he's continuing that dominance over the sword division against sylvie who's kind of out of sorts right now uh really struggling to back off of the season definitely has a stack made a lot of sense pretty smart strategy and i definitely like zerkatry as a setup sweeper for a cleanup really really nice Nice play from DJ, as always. I do want to address this, though, DJ. I'm not medially biased against you at all. Uh, with our pick and videos, as you know full well because you watch them, uh, we do try and look at the strengths and weaknesses on both sides, uh, both teams, and we look at potential opportunities for both sides, and then we weigh up our opinions based on that. So I don't quite know where this media bias accusations come from. Yes, I do like upsets. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want upsets? You know? <laughs> Because that actually makes the league kind of fun. Uh, definitely when the lesser players beat the more experienced players. Or the, or the weaker players perceived beats the stronger players in the season. It definitely makes for a lot more interesting talking points and stuff like that. So I'm not biased against you. We all just want to have fun here, dude. So chill out with the flaming and discord. Thank you. Right. 
coming in at number one, who would have guessed? Transor, of course, um, picking up another very dominant win against Grimpix, as you would expect. Uh, definitely excited to see Lando T picking up kills instead. Uh, obviously, Zero Aura has been hung in the limelight all season long, so the fact that Lando T um, is able to put in work as well bodes ominous for the people that still have to play him because it does prove that he's not just relying on Zero Aura, which a lot of us were joking about with him for a while. I did actually ban Zero Aura for my match against him um, just because I didn't want to see it. But yeah, he's got so many threats on his team, it's incredibly difficult to play against him. But uh, we will obviously see how well. Um, I do against him. He has lost the game. Denistrio did manage to beat him, so uh, it is possible, but it's going to be tough. But either way, it's going to be a great fun match. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so is Transel, I know. Uh, Transel has actually said to me privately in Discord that he's bringing a bit of spice this week, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he's got for me. But yeah, either way, I'm going to stop rambling, so I'm going to get on out of here. My name is Robomi Teacher. I'm a coach of the Robomi for Bombies. Stay safe. Stay awesome, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.